Good afternoon. Today is the 26th of August and uh, this is part 10 of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2024 Nebworth Classic Motor Show at Nebworth House near Stevenage in Hertfordshire. I do apologize by the way for the wind noise, for the music in the background. Unfortunately there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, there'll also be announcements which are annoying. Again, I'm not going to do about it, just the way that it goes on this channel. So yes, if I fall over, if I get things wrong, just the way that it is. Um, 1970 to 1971, Vauxhall Victor FD. I really like these FD Victor and Mentors, actually, videos. It's because I'm a big fan of Ronald Hogg and Deceased, probably. This one's actually got a bench seat in it. I didn't really get a bit bench seat. Probably this is one of the lowest specification models. The one that's used in Ranhock at the seat is a 68, um, principally. There's also a Ventura of the same era used. Um, that's a bit of a higher specification than this supermodel. I'm more interested, though, personally, actually, much so lovely FDs, in this Chevette, 1981 to 82 Chevette Estate. Someone's put a five-speed gearbox in it, which is good because the original Chevette gearbox is um, not great, viewers. Um, having driven a, um, an original spec Chevette 1980 L Saloon last year, the HSR, which I drove, um, I think in 2022 I drove one of those, was a bit better than that. Um, HB Viva 1967, um, 47 horsepower, 1.2 engine. Uh, yeah, so not the fastest then, but uh, never mind. This is the Deluxe 90 model, but it doesn't refer to 90 horsepower, clearly. Um, then an FB Victor. We saw a modified one earlier on um, today. Uh, these, I don't think these are the nicest looking Victors. I think the FC looks better than that, or, and the F-Type, which is my opinion. Very sort of typical early 60s styling, though. And then a couple of... Uh, Ogle SX Fountains. There were a lot more of those here yesterday. We had a look at them, but these were built in the early 60s, I think 61, 62 only, um, by Ogle Design. And they're based on a mini, just with a different body. All the running gear and everything else is the same. So I presume if you want to upgrade one of these, you could just have to drive one. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Ogle 70, uh, Cooper S, for Cooper, but it's from Netherlands, that car. Right. Mark IV Supra twin cam 24 valve engine and um, this one's got a 5 speed gear but they, they may have a 6 speed engine. could be wrong but I think they had a 6 speed in anyway on a P plate so 9297 very very nice BMW 6 series here probably an M635 CSI or something like that lovely car yeah 1985 this one absolutely delicious i wouldn't maybe call a hummer h2 delicious but um there it is somebody likes those a very very late herald is this a 1200 or a 1250 presumably it's a 1200 i forgot they made a 1200 as late as this i thought it was just the 1360s but clearly not it is a 1200 probably one of the very last of the 1200s because um, by this stage the Triumph Toledo was out, which was sort of replaced it eventually. Um, then customised Mini 7067 on an R. Um, and then uh, was that a Clubman or a Toyota GT? Okay, anyway, I like this Astra G. That's nice. Actually, these are getting to the stage where they're starting to become classic. They're getting rare, but they're not necessarily that valuable. That's a 2000 1.6 SXI. I'd love to drive an Astra G on my channel viewers. I've never managed it so far, which is annoying, but um, I haven't quite. And then this is the Bulldog um, Rover SC1 with a V8 engine. We saw this yesterday. We've seen this at many, many, many events in and around the London area. I assume that's where it lives, somewhere, somewhere near here. 1991 Ford Mustang, 5-litre LX, with 225 horsepower. I think the next Mustang is also on this platform. Right, the uh, Dodge Avenger, we're going to skip, we've been going on to this MG ZS. Very nice view, ZS 180, um, very late one, 2006 registration, although made in 2005, I imagine. Um, yeah, KV6, E36. BMW 3 Series convertible and uh, 96, 97. I don't know what specification that exactly. 
but I'm going to keep going with this terrible singing. Um, Aston Martin DB6 automatic. Mm, delicious. 69.70 on an H. Um, Jaguar XK120. Absolutely amazing. Wow. The show is, is great. But what, you know, one of the most crazy cars of all is the Lee Francis we saw earlier, which is <laughs> totally kind of sort of set me back. Um, but again, we've got this Marcus Mantula on the key plate, so I'm not exactly sure what year that is. I think most of these use Ford engines, although I could be completely wrong. Um, this is a 1985, you actually know it's got a Rover V8 in it. The later ones from the 1990s normally yeah. have Ford engines in them. Right, let's try this next one. Ford SVT 150 Lightning, I've seen that before. Very, very nice Jaguar XJ6. <laughs> Dark green, the beige leather interior viewers. Very nice. 2010 Morgan. No specifications. Sure. Oh, a Lancia Beta Spider. Two litre engine. This would be from about 1980. Um, look at that crazy interior. I gather these are really, really nice cars to drive. I've never driven one, but I would certainly like to have a go in this place. And here's this um, Mark II Fiat Punto. But I remember this from last year. A gentleman bought it as well. Active Sports. I think it's a 2002 or something. Uh, yep. It is 2002. It's getting rare, I suppose. All rusting away. Um, Corvette. 76 Stingray Corvette. With a kind of beige vinyl or beige leather in it. And then something else rare here is a Middlebridge Scimitar. Um, this is a 1990. Middlebridge was the continuation company for light scimitars after they finished production, I think, through various successor companies. And um, by this stage, 1989-90, we've got Middlebridge making them. Also rare is this um, DAF 1300. I presume with the um, 1.3 Renault Clayon font engine, silver with the uh, very magic transmission in it. Um, just about before the company was bought by Volvo, in which case um, these actually became the Volvo 66. That is a 1975, and there is presumably two drive belts for a while. 1970-71 MGB Roadster with me like star wheels. Right, let's get to the um, next area of views before I actually go deaf. Right, 1976-77 Triumph Stag Mark II, one of the later ones, um, four-speed manual Rover drive. Nice colour with the um, correct on wheels as well. Porsche 928 S2, B from the 1980s. Automatic with uh, period correct mobile phone. Most of them were automatics, of course, as uh, most you will know from. Uh, Top Gear's unfortunate is in South America. Citizen Beg Ford popular, originally from the 50s, but in the 60s, 70s, so many converted into sort of hot rods for racing and things, and this is one of them. 1964, Austin A40, not Countryman actually. The Countryman would have this sort of separate hatchback, this does not. Bedford HA van that's been customised. This is everywhere, this thing. This is, I've seen it so many times. The 68, this one, but it has a uh, 3.5 Rover V8 engine. The front grille is from a Mark II Escort, which is why I originally confused it with a, an Escort. It's not. It's an HA um, Bedford van. It's been heavily, heavily modified. 1934's Model A. Um, port at some point. I don't know exactly when. Right hand drive for some reason, this one. Interesting. Then uh, Chevy 3100 pickup truck from Virginia, presumably a 57 model, judging by the number plates there. Ooh, a Duretti, a Swallow Duretti. These were based on the Triumph TR2, but in my opinion, that's a much nicer looking car than the TR2. Didn't last so very long. It, not, not an Italian car. And the, um, <laughs> the name's based on a lady called Dorothy. Just Italianized, so Duretti, which is um, interesting. 6970 Ford Cortina 200E, 
no vinyl roof. We do have an eight-track cassette player in there, which is which is good. Glenn Campbell. I don't think I've heard much of his music. MG CD, 1951. And then is that some kind of Singer 9? That's a interesting car. Another 1957 Chevy Bel Air. Oh, it's for sale. Okay. Call 07541520765 or 012773542254. Let's get my numbers right today, viewers. As Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel says, this uh, could be yours. A bit of Americana there. And this is for sale as well, this um, Vermillion 1980 MGB Roadster with close ratio gearbox and a new hood, £6,800. 07976441298. As Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel says, this could be yours. I was amazed how affordable these things are. The midget was earlier on here, it was like under £3,000 or something, I think it was. Um, Buick Special, I think these are called. They're from the 1950s. Fifty-five. Then whatever this is, I have no idea what that is at all. Apparently it's a rover. That could just be the engine. It could be anything. Another one of these. Uh, I think it's a popular this with um, interesting bodywork modifications. So popular back in the day for modifying. Then a 1951 Austin, sort of, I believe an A40. Um, it's not one of those now, viewers. It's not one of those at all. This thing, what's oh, a DAX? Okay, the people who make the AC cab. Uh, yeah, that uh, is extraordinary. One of the only hard top designed by Rich Howlett. 2000 Rover 25 1.8 automatic. Yeah, this says, um, presumably someone's a member of a Rover CVT register, which uh, I don't think they're the most reliable gearbox ever viewed. I've driven a, a 200 with this gearbox and it wasn't the best necessarily. 7172 MGB Roadster with the roast style wheels and not the fish mouth grill, it'll be a little bit later than that then. I think we're going to skip that BMW and move on to this replica um, Ford Focus Mark 1 rally car. It says RS on it. Was this originally an RS or is it just pretending to be one? I don't know, viewers. Let me know in the comment section below. Sorry, fella. And then, oh yes, here's a Ford RS 200. This, I think, is an 85 or something like that, this one, or maybe an 86. This is just amazing. I, I loved seeing this yesterday. I love seeing it again now. There's a few Sierra bits on it. The doors, for example, the figure modified Sierra items. Reliant helped them to build this. Yes, Reliant. Home of the Robin and everything. Right. Break from the music for a bit, viewers. Let's get going. This is the final row that we're filming, so hopefully we can make it. Um, Mark 6 Escort RS2000 4x4. Oh, viewers, that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, can't talk about that... Uh, E30 touring. We can talk about this stag though. I forget the name of this colour. It's not just called purple. There's a name for it, but I always forget. Let's have a look at the uh, thing here. See if we've got two and two. Right? So I've just got one. So it'd be a, uh, a Mark II, and it's an automatic one. Um, roughly, sort of half of the stags are automatic, half of them are manual. Then uh, some Mark One, Mark Two escorts. We've got a. 1969 to 70 four door 1300 super that's a rare specification to see this one um, looks very straight and unmodified which is it's good it makes a change i mean i don't mind the modified ones but um always prefer things like this really um same year 6970 rs 2000 and then another rs 2000 next to it a mark ii um they are quite different looking underneath they're virtually the same which is why the estates and the vans are a mark one of the mark ii front end 
um, for the later ones. Um, this one, 76, 77, same year as Professionals one, uh, which was um, a white one, registered 77, that particular one. And then this, uh, oh gosh, they called them, I think a Thames van at the time. Um, the state version, no, no, sorry, the van version of the uh, Anglia and the Prefect. The, the state cars are called the Escort and the Squire. Um, but that's the van version, which would be the Thames badge thing, I think. And then uh, an E30 BMW 3 Series convertible, um, 92, 93 on a K. Um, let's, not, let's not fall over um, someone's lunch there, viewers. So, yeah, quite late for the E30, but the convertibles will be stated to continue a bit later than the saloons. Austin Healy 3000 Mark II, a BT7, 1962. This one has been converted to right hand drive. Um, sold tons and tons and tons of them to America back in the day. And then a very rare thing here, a 105 Yanglia, but it's a standard model, it's not a deluxe model. The um, standard models with this grille here are quite rare. The vast majority of the Anglias sold were deluxe models, not standard ones like this, deluxe models. Like the one in Harry Potter and things like that. 9192 Volkswagen Scirocco Mark II, GT2, so right at the end. They finished production in 92. One of the things I like about the Scirocco's particularly are the rear lights like that. They are superb, aren't they? Um, then a uh, Maserati V8, I think they call called the Spider, which is a manual. And it's got a beige leather interior, viewers. I do like a nice beige leather interior. So it makes my, my, my day a lot better when I see a car with that sort of specification. Um, 81, 82 Ford Granada Mark II. This is probably an 81, actually, because it's a pre facelift one. Um, 2.3L, a rare specification, actually. Most of them are gears that you see these days. Um, and here's the standard. Standard popular 103E, unrestored, registered in 1956. So we've seen quite a few with the uh, modified one. This is this is completely standard straight. Um, 30 brake horsepower. The caravan and then a big super white power pickup truck thing. Okay, and um, that's interesting. Right, let's go this way, this. When I saw you, I fell in love and smiled because you knew. Okay. I can imagine you fall in love with one of these Jaguars quite easily. It's an XJS it's actually six Sovereign. Um, it is a uh, 1995, I think, this one. Oh, oh, you very nice, we like those very much, viewers. We also like um, the uh, model two generations on, on which is um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the VZX 350, and that's got a uh, beige leather well, interior with wood, so anything in the world is right, isn't it? These are nice cars to drive, actually, they're very nice. That's just an XJ6, it's a lower end, but it's still very luxurious. C5 Corvette, I think this is. Or is that a C6? LS3 engine, so I imagine it might be the uh, C6. Right next to it is a C7. I have driven one of these. Um, yeah, amazing, I have driven one of those. I drove it earlier on this year. They're very, very rare in this country, but um, I drove a UK spec one. They sold them over here for one dealer only, which is Ian Allen Motors at Virginia Water in Surrey. And another yeah, Austin A40 right. Farina, 66. 66, right at the end of um, production for these. Again, this is not, um, this is not a uh, countryman, it's just a standard one. And then a, another Camaro SS, like the uh, crazy supercharged one that we saw I think in the, the uh, very first part of the entire series of shambolic shuffles that we're doing today. That is a 1967 stroke, a 435 horsepower engine. And then uh, this is Dolomite again that we, we saw I think yesterday, very late 1850 HL, 1982, 1981 on a W.